Okay, hi everybody. So we're gonna look at gradient descent versus Newton's method. And so we're gonna do it in the context of how to minimize a given function. I have some function and I wanna find the argmin, which is in the input space, and the minimum value, which is the output when I plug in the argmin. So two ways to do this. Gradient descent is the first way. And it starts by guessing at a point and producing some new points, P P1, P2, P3, P4, and it'll keep going. Newton's method also starts by guessing a point, and it'll produce some new points, P1, P2, P3, P4, etc. Now, Newton's method works much better, but it requires us to calculate more derivatives, more partial derivatives. And so, and the big difference here is that gradient descent linearizes g, whose derivative is the gradient at that point p, where we guessed, whereas Newton's method linearizes the gradient map, and whose derivative is now a much bigger um, derivative involving a Jacobian matrix with many columns. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this is the big difference. So right now I'm going to show you how I would study is I just try to redo this, um, but I might, so I'll just move this, move this up and I'll try to rethink about this. Okay. So first gradient descent. So gradient descent looks at, um, well first, okay, so guess sum p in Rn. It's not gonna be the argument because we guessed it. Newton's method also guesses guess p in Rn. It's not gonna be the argument because we just guessed. And then what do they do? They produce better, better guesses better points, p1, p2, p3, etc. And the exact same thing is what Newton's method does. It produces better points, p1, p2, p3. Now they do it in different ways. How? Well, okay. So gradient descent linearizes at the point p using this linear approximation formula whereas Newton's method linearizes the gradient map at the point P using this linear approximation formula. Okay, so now why is this gradient descent? Well, because the derivative of G, well, since G has just one real number output, its derivative is actually a dot product with the gradient evaluated at that point. The derivative at the point P is a dot product with the gradient at that point. And so all we have to do is compute the gradient for gradient descent. Well, we have to compute the gradient for Newton's method too, so it's some actual vector with numbers. When we plug in at the point P, we get the output vector. But then we're actually gonna linearize this whole gradient, which means we're going to get like some linear combination of the columns of the Jacobian matrix of this map. You know, so the gradient map will go from Rn back to Rn. And so, you know, its derivative is not, is not a dot product. Its derivative is some linear combination. Okay. And now, what do we do to get our movement? Well, here... We, just, we don't even have to solve for v because we just know that if we choose v to be negative the gradient, this will give a negative number and it will add a negative number right here to get a smaller number at our new better point. Our, our point p1 will be equal to p1 plus v, where v is just, we didn't have to solve for v, we just choose v so that we get a negative number. And now, um, oh, this is, P1 should be equal to our guess plus V. Uh, 
And then we just repeat, repeat, repeat this entire process. We compute, compute the gradient at P1, and we would say P2 equals P plus V, where V is, um, is now going to be the negative gradient at P1. All right, so this, this V was actually the negative gradient at P. And we keep going. P3 will be P plus the negative gradient at P2, etc. And we know that if we actually choose a small amount, so maybe like divide this by 100, divide this by 100, so we only step a small size vector, we're scaling this vector down so it's a shorter vector, then this could reasonably get you know better and better values. Okay, but what does Newton's method do? Newton's method actually tries to do something some, something very different. Try to find critical points. Try to find critical critical points. Well, what are critical points? They are where the gradient of g at that point. So let's say that the new point we want to find it is equal to the zero vector. Okay. And what that means is that you know we'd like to find a v to find a v such that this is the zero vector. Okay, so we just you know over here we just knew what v was. We just choose v to be negative the gradient and scale it down so it's a little shorter. But here we have to solve for v. V is unknown. But the nice thing is, this is a linear system. Solve for V in this linear system of equations. Right, where, where it's this, well, I mean, we could write it as a system, like, let's put the unknown as P, or maybe we'll put the unknown as X to say, like, it's unknown. We have to try to find x so that the gradient is the zero vector. And this, this is a nonlinear. In general, this will be a nonlinear system. System of equations. This is my abbreviation of equations. E-Q-N-S. Okay, and then, so you see the big difference here is we don't have to solve for v in gradient descent. We just know that if we make the gradient, or if we make v in the negative of the gradient, then we'll get a smaller value. But over here, we have to solve for v. We have to solve a linear system of equations. It's not too bad. We can't solve this nonlinear system very easily. So what we do is we linear approximate and solve this linear system because we want a new point. So solve for v. So find v. Okay, and then we'll take p1 to be p plus v. And if linear approximation were perfect, we would be done. p1 would be the answer. It would be a critical point. The gradient is zero. So that could possibly be the argument. Um, but linear approximation is only an approximation. So we only expect p1 to be closer to the solution. And then we'll repeat and set uh, P, P2 to be P1 plus some other V um, where we solved now a new linear system by linearizing at P1, you know, taking the derivative at P1 instead um, and repeating. Okay, so at each step here, we just compute the gradient. We know what V should be, and we add vectors. At each step here, we have to do more work we, yes, we compute the gradient, we need it for our system of equations, but then we actually compute the derivative of the gradient map, produce a linear system, which we then solve, and then finally we do vector addition to update and find our new guess point. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my summary. Uh, these are two great methods for optimization, but in fact, I will mention that Newton's method doesn't need to just minimize functions. It can solve any system of nonlinear equations. In this case, their system came from the gradient map, um, but your system of equations could come from anywhere.
and you can still take the derivative and solve and update and repeat. And so this is a very powerful method in all of science um, to solve nonlinear equations. Okay. How did I do um, repeating what was over here? Looks pretty good. Very similar. Yeah, we take this nonlinear system of equations in the unknown p, critical point, and we make it into this linear system in a movement vector. And that will be how we move and update our guess.